Hi Cornelius, are you ready for the first philosophical topic? Hello Zell, yes I am, hit me squarely. Hit me squarely. So, today's topic, is philosophy an elitist occupation? What do you think? I gotta ask you, what do you mean by elitist and what do you mean by occupation? Well, uh, in ancient time, anybody could be a philosopher because people used philosophy as a way to entertain themselves because, of course, they didn't have uh, radio, internet, TV. So what did they do? They would go to the town square called Forum and they would discuss stuff. And some philosophers were acting as entertainers, street entertainers, where they would... Uh, ask interesting questions and explain uh, interesting stuff to the crowds and they would get a little bit of money or food for that. But I have a feeling today philosophy is much more different and much more academic. What do you think about it? I agree with you, yeah. When you think about the agora and the sophists, uh, they were basically there to entertain people and uh, yeah, at least one of them was killed for his over-entertainment. Um, <laughs> When I, when I hear the word elitist, uh, it sounds like something that is purposefully exclusive. Um, and when I hear the word occupation, it sounds like something that you get paid for. And what you were describing was more of a hobby. Uh, and if exactly. it's going to be an occupation, then yes, it almost always is elitist because occupations, you know, like doctors or whatever, require some skills. Um, yeah, and if you read any philosophical papers, they're full of jargon. And jargon like that, that doctors and lawyers use, is really just meant to exclude people from the profession. So if we're talking about that group of people, yeah, mm -hmm. they're clearly trying to keep other people out of it. Um, and they're probably shooting themselves in the foot because philosophy is pretty entertaining. But I don't know if philosophy was always meant to be, um, you know, uh, a means of passing the time. I think it was also a first attempt at science. Um, and people wanted to describe the world and understand why the world works the way it does. Uh, and then there's also the moral dimension of philosophy, which we still haven't figured out, which is probably where it's applicable today. Um, so, yeah, if philosophy is an occupation, then it's elitist. But I would say at its best, it should not be. And, uh, yeah, anyone who says you need an education to be a philosopher is probably a jerk and probably also a poor philosopher, too. Uh, quite strong words, which I like. Let's talk about how, how did that happen. I think uh, people are always curious about the world. And as you said correctly, in ancient time, uh, philosophy was something else. It comes from Greek uh, work philosophia, which means love of wisdom. So being a philosopher is just searching for a wisdom. But uh, soon people realize that some stuff in the world go into different categories of knowledge and uh, I think math was always separate from philosophy and then they said that the natural stuff should be a separate natural philosophy now called sciences and then different branches of philosophy with acquiring knowledge separate in the logic, biology, astronomy, physics, chemistry and all the sciences we have now. Uh, so I think it, it was a gradual thing over the years that big chunks of philosophy which were discussed by ancient Greeks and Romans were just put to different, more formal subjects. What do you think about it? Uh, yeah, I think that's true and I think it's also appropriate. Um, you know, the investigation of physics or medicine or things like that does require a rigorous approach and you do want people who are elites uh, to do it in a specialized way. Um, and it sounds to me like you're saying that there's not much left for philosophy to do, which I kind of agree with. Uh, you have, I think, questions of what is a good life and uh, how should we treat others, right? Those are sort of More religious and questions. philosophical questions. I think that's where philosophy still has something to add. Um, and there is actually a science, well, a pseudoscience that tries to address those things. Political science, you know, <laughs> attempts to look at um, those kind of interactions and quantify them. But it's not a very successful science. So I think philosophy as an occupation still has a role there. Um, unfortunately for philosophy, most of the good ideas have already been talked about like 2,500 years ago, and we haven't had very many good ones since then, you know, uh, between mm, 
say, Aristotle um, or Lao Tzu and Descartes, there's not that many really good new ideas. Um, it's sort of a desert. And then when I read something like Kant or Heidegger, you know, my eyes glaze over. If you can't say it in 20 or 30 pages, it's probably not worth saying at all. Yeah. Um, so you get these, you know, very uh, elite and uh, refined ways of expressing yourself, but I'm not sure what the point is. It's not applicable to the people it's supposed to be applicable to, which yeah. are human beings who want to live a good life. Yes, 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 yes. I would agree with you. And uh, regarding the uh, really complicated uh, jargon of modern philosophy, I really like uh, the quote of Noam Chomsky, who is one of the uh, leading intellectuals in the States, and somebody asked him what he thinks about continental philosophy, which is uh, uh, really dominant in continental Europe, of course. And he said, I cannot comment on the stuff I don't understand which was pretty nice way to say, guys, what you are talking about, nobody can understand. Uh, and I think that that happened uh, also gradually, because with every generation of philosophers, they introduce more and more concepts, more ontology, more knowledge, more words describing different theses of, of uh, philosophy. And then the next generation build upon the previous generation and use the words they invented. So uh, now in order to understand modern philosophical texts, you should really have some academic knowledge of philosophy, which was actually not the original intent of ancient Greeks, right? Well, I mean, yeah, but of course it was only the elites back then who were able to afford to stand around the agora, right? It wasn't like slaves or women or foreigners were permitted to speak on the rostra. Um, I would say in defense of elitism, though, uh, philosophy can be dangerous. There's lots of bad philosophies out there, you know, different racist philosophies mm -hmm. um, that have caused, you know, millions of people to die and, and still have an effect. Mm -hmm. um, and... The elitism that we are, you know, currently wringing our hands over actually does have a place in the sense that you can moderate that kind of bad philosophy. If you train people to think correctly and you train them uh, in what has gone wrong in philosophy before, you probably are doing the world a favor. So I don't know that anyone should be able to jump up on a soapbox and, you know, just tell people, ah, this is... This is the right way to live. Follow me if they're dangerous people. You know, we do need to have some kind of guardianship. Thoughts yes. are weirdly persuasive, and once they get in your head, they never get out. Yeah, right? yeah, yeah, yeah. I would agree with you. Uh, amateur philosophy has its drawbacks, and I think it's nice that, you know, there is academic philosophy, which is richly structured and rigorous has magazines and references to quite complicated uh, topics of the previous philosophers. But, you know, we need to find ourselves and this channel, you know, and our role on, on uh, Internet. And I think what I would like to achieve is to bring back the joy of philosophy in a sense that it's a quite entertaining discussion form. And it can be lower down to simple words, and explain to people who have no previous exposure. Uh, and I think that, that that part of philosophy is, is the thing that I'm lacking, that you know you just go outside, meet, meet new people in the city, and you discuss quite interesting topics and understand their view of it. So mm. I, yeah. Oh, I, I can't wait. That sounds great. When philosophy is ahead of pornography and cat videos, we will have conquered the internet. Uh, we have a long way to go, Cornelius. We have a I long like, way. I like both those things. Yeah. Okay, <laughs> I think that's enough for the first session. Until next time. Hasta luego. Bye.